Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today we are making hong shao rou. Rou means meat. In this recipe, it often refers to pork belly. Hong shao means red braise. It's a Chinese cooking method that often involves caramelizing sugar to give the food a significant red color. Every family has their own way of making hong shao rou. I'm excited to share my version. It's easy, beginner friendly, and super delicious. So let's get started. You will need some pork belly. This slab here is about one kilogram. Make sure you get a nice piece with those striation layers. Also, you want to keep the skin on because that provides the collagen protein, which will make the sauce thick and glossy at the end. You can switch the pork belly to ribs. That will be the other classic recipe called Hong Shao Pai Gu in Chinese. If you don't eat pork, you can use beef, lamb, or even chicken wings will do really well. Let me show you how I like to cut the pork belly. First, find the direction that the muscle fibers are aligned. For this slab, the grains actually run diagonally. That's okay. Mainly, you can tell the direction is from the right to the left. When the meat is cooked, the muscle fibers will shrink. So I like to cut the pork belly into a 1.5 inches by 2 inches cuboid. The length that is parallel with the muscle grains should be 2 inches. The width that is across the muscle grains should be 1.5 inches. That way, you will end up with perfect pork cubes after it is cooked. Of course, if you're using ribs or chicken wings, you do not need to worry about it. I am going to blanch the pork. Fill a pot with cold water and add your pork belly in. 10 to 12 scallions. Cut off the roots and the top messy part. People tend to throw these two parts away, but they are actually great for blanching the meat. You just slightly crush them to release the flavor. Add them to the pot. Quickly cut 6 to 8 slices of ginger. Add it to the pot along with a drizzle of Chinese cooking wine. If you can't cook with alcohol, you can throw in a few pieces of orange peel here. Turn the heat to high and bring this to a boil. There is a lot of foamy stuff floating on top of the water. You want to get rid of that by using a fine sieve as it does affect the taste. Fish out the aromatics and discard them. Take the pork out. Make sure you drain out all the liquid, or you can let the pork sit on a strainer to get rid of the excess liquid. This is important because we will sear the pork slightly and any moisture will make the oil splatter. Set it aside, and let's prepare some aromatics. Cut the scallions in half. Slice two to three inches of ginger into thin pieces. Place the scallions and the ginger slices at the bottom of a clay pot. If you don't have a clay pot, a Dutch oven will work just as well. Later on, we will simmer the pork in this pot. The pork can get burned easily due to the high collagen content, and it can stick to the bottom, so a layer of aromatics will help to prevent that. I reserved three stalks of the white part of the scallions and six slices of ginger on the side here. Roughly dice the white part of the scallions. Crush six to eight cloves of garlic and peel them. Put everything in a bowl. Besides that, you want to gather some spices. One teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorns, two pieces of dried red chilies, a small piece of cinnamon stick, a quarter of a nutmeg, one star anise. I put them all together because they will go into the wok at the same time. Turn the heat to medium low. Add all the pork into the wok. Then stir it for five to six minutes. I'm trying to render a little bit of fat out and slightly char the pork. Okay, I think we got some oil out. See that little bit? That's enough. Please do not go too crazy and pull out too much oil because I found that it will dry out the pork slightly. Tossing all the aromatics 
and stir them for a few minutes or until fragrant. Turn off the heat. Transfer the pork into the clay pot. Put the skin side down because that is how the skin can get that beautiful red color. Put the aromatics into the clay pot as well. There is not that much fat left in the wok, but it should be enough to caramelize the sugar. Before you add the sugar, please check the wok to make sure it's clean. You don't want any pork bits or spices left in there. Otherwise, they will burn and leave a bad taste to the dish. Sugar goes in. Turn the heat to low and stir it constantly. In a few minutes, the sugar will turn into a light amber color. It's not there yet, so keep stirring. If you are using a black cookware like mine, that is hard to see the color change. You can use stainless steel spatula to lift the sugar, so you can check it carefully. The time difference between dark red and burned is minimal, so you really want to keep an eye on it. Now the color is right, and the sugar is bubbling like that. You can pour in three cups of water. Turn the heat to high, and we will bring the water to a boil. The color of the liquid is not that pretty at this point because it is diluted by the water. After simmering, it will be concentrated and mixed with all the collagen. Then it will be shiny and beautiful. Now it is boiling. Turn off the heat and pour it into the clay pot. Place the clay pot on the stove. Now I'm going to add four tablespoons of soy sauce and four tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. One trick that I like to do is to place a small plate on the top for two purposes. First, it will add a slight pressure to the pork, which will make them come out even more tender. Second is that the pork tends to flow to the top of the water. Any part that is exposed to the air won't come out as flavorful. So by pushing it down with a little plate, will even out the flavor. Put on the lid, turn the heat to high, and bring this to a boil. Then switch it to the lowest heat and simmer the pork for one and a half hour. Another thing that I want to mention is that the liquid that I add. Including the water, soy sauce, and Chinese cooking wine is enough for me to simmer my pork for one and a half hour. But it will depend on your cookware, so you do want to check it the last thirty minutes of simmering to make sure you still got enough liquid in there. It's not going to be boiled to dry. If you do end up needing to add more water, please add boiling hot water. Don't add cold water. Okay. This has been simmered for one and a half hour. Let's check it out. That looks good. Turn off the heat. Remove the little plate. Pick out all the scallions and the ginger slices. Give it a taste to adjust the flavor. I do need to add a third teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoon of sugar here. Carefully mix the seasonings in. Try not to break the pork because they're so tender. I ended up turning the heat back on to help to dissolve the salt and sugar because I just can't stir them too much without breaking them. A little fun fact: this dish can go from slightly sweet to super sweet. I once had a version that the pork tastes as sweet as candy, which I don't prefer it that way. But it depends on your taste. For plating, I like to serve it with some blanched baby bok choy, which is really simple. You just add some salt and oil to the boiling water and cook the baby bok choy for about twenty seconds. They are great to balance the fattiness of the pork belly. The pork is so delicate that I have to transfer them to the bowl individually, so I don't break them.
Use a sieve to remove all the spices from the sauce. Check how much sauce you have left. If you have too much, you can reduce it a little bit. Also, when dealing with collagen and some sugary sauce, it will bubble a lot, which makes you think there is a lot of sauce. But once you turn off the heat and let it cool a little bit, it's actually less than what you think. Please be aware with that because I did over reduce mine and I ended up with so little sauce. But that's okay. This stew looks and tastes fantastic. Top a little bit of scallions and enjoy. I just simply eat it with white rice. It also goes great with noodles. This pork belly is so flavorful and tender, it just melts in your mouth as soon as you take a bite. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment, let me know how it goes. As always, don't forget to check the description where you can find all the links, including the printable recipe, the related videos, the purchase link for the special ingredients if you don't know where to buy them, or the tools that I used in this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!